It can be hard to imagine a sorting algorithm that is not comparison-based. So I wanted to go ahead and give you an example of a non-comparison-based algorithm. And what we're going to look at is an algorithm called counting sort. So counting sort can be quite a fast and practical algorithm for sorting integers that are not too large. And it's even more powerful when it's combined with radix sort, which we're going to see in the next video. Okay, so counting sort is a non-comparison-based sorting algorithm. For this video, we're going to assume that we want to sort non-negative integers. And that's important for the working of counting sort. So say that we have an array of n non-negative integers, and that all the integers are between 0 and k. Counting sort can sort this array in time order n plus k. So if the numbers are, aren't too big, if all the integers are at most a constant times n, then the overall running time is order n. And this is actually faster than is possible with a comparison-based sorting algorithm. So this is, uh, there's actually, you can show a lower bound for comparison-based sorting algorithms that any comparison-based sorting algorithm has worst case complexity omega of n log n. Okay, so this can actually beat that lower bound by, um, you know, not just being comparison-based. So another key property of counting sort is that it is a stable sort. And this is going to be important in the next video uh, when we use counting sort as a component of another sorting alg algorithm called radix sort. A disadvantage of counting sort is that it is not an in-place algorithm. Okay, so we are going to need some extra memory also proportional to n plus k in counting sort. So the key idea in counting sort is that since the elements to be sorted are non-negative integers, we can use them as indices into an array. So what we're going to do is first create an auxiliary array called counts, and we're going to use this array to store how many times each element in the input array appears. Okay, so in this example, uh, I'm calling my input array uh, A, capital A, and we create this auxiliary array called counts, and when the largest element in A is a value k, then counts is going to be of size k plus 2. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a pass through A, and we're going to keep updating counts so that counts of i plus 1 is equal to the number of times that i appears in the input array. Okay, so counts, it just keeps track of how many times each integer appears in a. And it may see, seem strange that we use counts of i plus 1 to hold the number of times that i appears instead of just counts of i, uh, but we do this for a reason. It's going to make the next step uh, a bit simpler. Okay. Okay, so let's look at an example of this first step. So we iterate through A. Um, first we see a 9, so we increment counts of 10. Then we see a 2, so we increment counts of 3. You see that 2 actually appears three times in the input array. So at the end of this first step, counts of 3 is going to be equal to 3. And so this is a pretty simple first step. We, just we, we can do this in one pass through A. The running time is order of n. Now let's look at the second step. In the second step, we're going to convert the counts into indices so that counts of i is the first position, is the position of the first appearance of i in the sorted order, if i appears in a. So in our example, consider the number 5. So what is going to be the first position where 5 appears in the sorted order? Well, 5 is going to first appear after 
all the numbers smaller than it, right? So in fact, since we use zero indexing, the index of the first five in the sorted order is equal to the number of numbers less than five in A. So in our example, two appears three times in A and three appears once. So there are four numbers smaller than five in the input array. So the first five in sorted order will occur at index four. Okay, so basically what we need to do for each element is we just need to count the number of numbers in the original array that are smaller than it. And we can do this easily with our array counts. And what we can do is just compute what are called the prefix sums of counts. For example, the number of numbers smaller than 5 is equal to the sum of counts of i from i equals 0 to i equals 5. Again, because counts of i plus 1 holds the number of times that i appears in the input array. Okay, so we can compute these prefix sums in one pass through the counts array. So this step can be done in time order of k. And after this step is done, then in our example, counts looks like the, the picture there given at the very bottom of this slide. So now we're almost done. In the third step, we're going to create a new array called temp, which has the same size as the original array A. And we're basically just going to write the elements of A in sorted order into this temp array. Now the only tricky thing about this is that we want to be sure that we have a stable sort at the end of the day. So this step might seem more complicated than needed, but doing it this way ensures that we have a stable sort. You can imagine that the integers in A you know, have some associated satellite data attached to them. So the two fives in A, they're not really equivalent because they might have different associated data. And it's important for us that the first five that appears in A is to the left of the, of the second five that appears in A in our sorted array. Okay, so to ensure stability, we're now going to make a forward pass through A. And let I be the loop variable that we use for this forward pass. And now consider A of I. If I is the first location where the number A of I appears in A, then we can write A of I to the counts of A of I position of temp. Because remember now that counts of J is the position of the first J in the sorted array. But remember that the number A of I may appear multiple times in A. So next, we're going to incre increment counts of A of I. This ensures that the next time we come across the number A of I, it'll still be the case that counts of A of I tells us the correct position where it should go. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and look at an example. Okay, so we're, we're making a forward pass through A. I is our loop variable. A of 0 is 9, so we look at the ninth entry of counts. We look at counts of 9, and counts of 9 is 7. So that tells us where 9 should go in, it, in sorted order. Okay, so we write 9 to the 7th, uh, to entry 7 in temp. Okay, and then we increment counts of 9. Okay, so it goes from 7 to 8. Okay, so now we've, now we've incremented it. Now we keep going through A. So I is 1. Uh, A of 1 is 2. So we go and look at the second entry of counts, counts of 2. And that tells us where 2 should go in the sorted order. And now counts of 2 is just 0. Okay, so we write two to the zeroth entry of temp. And now if we come across another two in A, you know, it shouldn't go to position zero anymore, it should go to position one. So we go ahead and increment 
counts of 2. So now the next time that we see a 2 in A, it's going to go to position 1 in temp. Okay, next I is 2, A of 2 is 5, so we go ahead and look at counts in position 5, and that's 4, so we go ahead and write 5 to the 4th entry of temp, as we've done in the bottom there, and we go ahead and increment the 5th entry of counts from 4 to 5. So the next time that we come across a 5, it's going to go in position 5 of temp. Okay, and so notice how we're getting this stable property, right? The, the next 5 that we come across is going to go to the right of this 5, right? Because we're incrementing counts. So next, i is equal to 3. a of 3 is again 2. We look at the second entry of counts, and because we incremented that before, now it's 1. So this second 2 that we've come across, it goes in position 1 to the right of the first 2 that we came across. And we again increment counts of 2. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea here. Um, when i is 4, we look a of 4 is 8. We look at the 8th entry of counts. It's 6. We go ahead and write 8 to the 6th entry of temp. Increment counts of 8. Uh, next, uh, A of 5 is 3. Look at the um, third entry of counts. It's 3. So we write 3 to the third entry of temp. And we increment. Uh, now we come across another 2. We look at counts of 2, and that says 2, so we write 2 to the second position of temp, and again we increment. And finally, the last element of A is 5. We look at counts of 5, and the uh, index there is 5, so we write the 5 to the fifth entry of temp. Okay, and yeah, go ahead and increment that, and now the algorithm is finished. So now you see that we have a sorted array. Uh, so temp is, uh, is now completely sorted. Okay, I guess the algorithm is not completely finished. We still just have one more step, and that's just to copy temp back into A. Okay? And uh, so from this description of the algorithm, hopefully it should be easy to see how you could write this in, in code. Uh, but I do give an example of this code in C++ at the Godbolt link here. Okay, so let's recap the steps of the algorithm in order to compute its complexity. So in the first step, we counted how many times each element of, of A appears, and we recorded the results in this auxiliary array called counts. So we did this with one pass through A, so the worst case time is theta of n. In the second step, we made one pass through counts to compute the prefix sums of counts, and the size of counts is k plus 2, where k is an upper bound on the largest integer in A. So this, take, this step takes time theta of k. Next, we made a pass through A. We looked up the location where each element goes using counts, and we, and we wrote that element into a new array called temp. So for each element of A, uh, we just did a constant amount of work, right? We, we looked up the corresponding entry in counts, and we wrote the value into temp. Uh, that's just a constant amount of work. So the complexity of step 3 is again theta of n. Finally, we copied temp back into A, which also has complexity theta of n. Uh, so the total running time is theta of n plus k. So note that counting sort is not in place. We use this auxiliary array counts of size roughly k, and we also use the auxiliary array temp of size n to write the elements in sorted order. So we actually use extra space of size theta of n plus k in this algorithm. And that's one drawback to counting sort. And counting sort is also a stable sort. So Again, this is ensured by the design of step 3. So we make a forward pass through A so that the left 
most element of a given value in A is the first one to be placed in temp. And after we place that element in temp, we increment counts. So if we ever come across an element with the same value, it's because we incremented counts, then that second element we come across is going to be placed to the right of the first one. Okay, so, so counting sort is a stable sort.